Thank you very much. So my name is uh, Fredrik Allansson. I'm presenting today on behalf of Dr. Robert Turkeltaub, who unfortunately was unable to make it here due to some unforeseen consequences. This is a di disclosure slide. The one thing I want to be 100% clear with in the interest of full transparency is that Rinrad is a drug that's owned by AstraZeneca. This research was paid for by AstraZeneca, and I'm an employee with AstraZeneca, just so that's absolutely clear. It's absolutely fine to take pictures. Just make sure you use some uh, make me look pretty filters when you use the pictures <laughs> later. <laughs> so um, the topic today is gout and hyperuricemia. Hyperuricemia is defined as an elevated level of urate in the body. Having an elevated level of urate in the body is important because when the concentration of urate becomes too high, the urate molecules tend to stick together and form crystals. These crystals often end up in joints, and there they can trigger painful inflammation, which is what we call gout. So urate at high concentrations cause gout. It's a matter of a scientific ongoing debate whether urate can also damage other parts of the body other than, than uh, joints. And uh, it's been shown that um, Hyperuricemia frequently coincides with uh, big and, and very frequent diseases like cardiovascular disease, obesity, uh, impaired kidney disease, and uh, diabetes. Verinrad is an experimental new drug which uh, lowers urate by decrease, uh, increasing the elimination of urate from the body. Febuxostatis is a drug that's been used for a decade, and it works by lowering the production of urate in the body. So by combining Varinrad and Febuxostat, we both decrease the production and increase the elimination of urate from the body, resulting in a very profound drop in urate levels in the body. This opened an opportunity to maybe see if uh, urate could be a driver of other diseases, by trying this treatment regimen and see the effects on uh, the heart or on the kidneys. And the study we conducted actually focused on the kidney function and the results that I will be showing you actually show that there is some early preliminary evidence that maybe urate also contributes to the progression of, of diabetic kidney disease. And based on this data, we've triggered a larger phase 2b trial because this was a small and early stage trial that we conducted. This slide shows the objectives and an overview of the design of the study we conducted. The main objective of this study was to use an acid lowering strategy with Verinrad and Febuxostat and see if we could improve kidney function in the patients. Uh, the patients we recruited for the study were patients with diabetes, they also had hyperuricemia, of course, and they had impaired kidney function. We recruited 60 such patients, so the data is just based on 60 patients. We randomized, we randomized the patients to either receive Verinrad and Febuxostat or to receive placebo. We treated them for 24 weeks, and then at the end of the treatment, we also followed them for another four weeks to make sure we didn't miss out on registering any late side effects of the treatment. This slide shows the main efficacy result of the study. The primary endpoint in the study was UACR. UACR is an abbreviation for urinary albumin to creatinine ratio. So it's essentially the amount of albumin in the urine. Albumin is a protein, and uh, when kidneys get damaged, they start leaking protein into the urine. So most of the people in this room probably have zero UACR. You have no protein in the urine. Uh, patients with uh, kidney impairment, uh, in particular if they have a very high amount of protein in the urine, are more likely to progress rapidly to kidney failure and therefore be needing dialysis. So UACR is essentially a uh, intermediary marker of uh, rapid progression to kidney failure. So the slide here shows uh, two lines. The blue line shows the change in protein in the urine over the 24 weeks in patients receiving placebo. 
as you can see, those patients didn't really change their amount of protein leaking into the urine much over those 24 weeks. <laughs> However, the red line shows the patients who received Varinuradam for Buxostat, and as you can see, there was a fairly rapid drop already at one week, and this surprised us a bit uh, in the amount of protein in the urine. This drop was sustained for the 24 weeks of treatment. The primary endpoint was at 12 weeks. So at 12 weeks, we had uh, a 39% decrease in UACR over placebo with the active treatment. This uh, was considered statistically significant because due to the small size and early stage of the study, we allowed ourselves an alpha of 0.1. So the p-value of 0 0.07 actually represents statistical significance and a positive trial. Of course, we also measured the, the effects on urate in the body, and, and this slide shows uh, that uh, the placebo arm, that's the blue line once again, didn't really change the amount of urate in the circulation, but patients who received the active treatment with Varinorad and Fabuxostat actually had a rapid initial drop in urate in the circulation. This was sustained out to 24 weeks and uh, was in the range of 60 to 65 percent. Impressive as that number might seem, uh, that's still an underestimation of the true effect because we had some issues with the sample collection in this study, which means that uh, the, the results here actually are um, uh, slightly more conservative than what we believe the true effect is, as seen in other phase two trials where we trial, trialed this regimen. Efficacy is, of course, very important with a new experimental drug, but safety is equally important. This slide, therefore, summarizes the safety findings from the study. The first bullet, I think, is the main point. There were no treatment-related, serious, treatment-emergent adverse events. That essentially means that there were no patients who had side effects due to the treatment that resulted in them having to go to the hospital. Something that's fairly common in patients that have uh, gout is that when you start them on urate-lowering therapy, the urate lowering in itself actually triggers a gout attack. That occurred in this study in only one of the patients who received active treatment. Patients with diabetic kidney disease, such as we recruited in this study, often have fluctuations in their uh, creatinine levels, which is an indica an, a different indicator of kidney function than the amount of protein in the urine. And so uh, that was the case also in this study. We had four patients in the study with uh, creatinine elevations more than 1.5 times baseline, but those were evenly distributed across the two arms. So we don't believe this is a safety concern going forward with this treatment regimen. Finally, there were no significant changes in vital signs such as uh, uh, blood pressure or pulse or other laboratory safety parameters. At the bottom right of this slide, you can see the adverse events that happened in more than one patient in the study. As you can see, we had a slight increase in diarrhea and dizziness in the patients who received Varinorad plus Fibuxostat. However, this only occurred in about 10% of the patients, so uh, only a reasonable number of the patients were affected. But it will, of course, be a side effect that will ha These are, of course, side effects that we'll have to track going forward in the development of the drug. Nasopharyngitis there on the bottom is just a fancy scientific name for a common cold. These are generally not caused by study drugs, so we think that's just a fluke finding. So overall, Varinrad and Fabuxostat were well tolerated. So to conclude, a combined treatment with Varinrad and Fabuxostat appeared to significantly uh, reduce the amount of protein leaking into the urine in patients with diabetes and albuminuria. These improvements were rapid and they were sustained for 24 weeks. Uh, we therefore believe that combining the uh, novel urate-1 inhibitor Varinrad with an exantine oxidase inhibitor such as Fibuxostat or allopurinol may benefit patients with hyperuricemia and kidney disease. This intensive urate lowering regimen with Varinrad and Fibuxostat was well tolerated in this small and early study. A phase 2b study assessing these, uh, these uh, results and trying to see if we can reproduce them uh, is underway. So the main take home message here is that maybe, just maybe, urate crystals contributes also to other, to, to, uh, 
to damage us uh, to also other organ systems than just the joint in the body if we can reproduce, if we can reproduce this data in uh, the subsequent studies. <coughs> 